Welcome to this episode. Here we are in Shista outside Stockholm, Sweden. Shista is one of the innovation hubs for new technology in Sweden, with a lot of high-tech companies. And from today and half a year, there will be going on an experiment with autonomous small minibuses driving on this street back and forward here in real traffic with real people. The project is called The Autopilot and it's a collaboration with a lot of different Swedish organizations, including Drive Sweden, that is a strategic innovation program. The vehicle has a 12 kilowatt hour battery capable of running between 6 and 10 hours on one charge, depending on the situation. It charge at a standard charging station during night and off-peak when only one vehicle is used. The vehicle is very sensitive to its surroundings and stops if someone comes in front of it. It's equipped with eight sensors. They have something called lidars, which is a laser that sends out signals and bounces back. And with those, you can see the surrounding. This first day of the test, the vehicle drove very slowly. But later, uh, the speed will be increased. But it felt that it was almost too sensitive. It didn't start from its bus stop just because a passenger was standing too close and it drove extremely slow when a car was parked too close to its programmed path. We uh, have uh, the Royal Institute of Technology in this uh, program as well and they will do uh, uh, re uh, research uh, regarding how people interact with this vehicle, not just on board, not just cars. Um, and uh, bikes, but also pedestrians around. So you don't stop it, uh, you don't jump in front of it, you don't do that with a normal car. How do you handle this? The vehicle drive itself, but for now it has a host on board, taking care of passengers and for regulatory reasons. The driving path is programmed with an exact GPS position. And the only way for it to avoid temporary obstacles in the street is to stop. Yeah, uh, but uh, now we also can take it over manually and drive past, uh, okay. if we would like. And then the host become a driver. There is potential for improvements. And the system will do more by itself later during this half a year test. And it will run without supervision on board. The big challenge is how to integrate that into society. How uh, everyone else are accepting it and uh, follow the rules. Uh, these buses will always follow the rules. So if you drive in front of it, it will take that in, in calculation and let you pass. Uh, so if everyone follows the rules, then there are uh, no problems. But everyone is not following the rules. And how will the traffic situation be when a normal driver learn that this kind of vehicle always stop, even when it has priority? When drivers start to abuse the system forcing the automized vehicle to stop all the time, how attractive will it be for the passengers in the automized service? That problem can probably not be solved until all cars is automized and legislation forbids manual driving. The plan is to integrate this kind of automated traffic into the public transport system, having them running through small suburbs where today normal public transport is not financially sustainable and feed passengers into the bigger transport systems. 
Urbanization in the world is very fast and the competition over land between different points of interest gets stronger all the time. We need smarter solutions for our transport needs. When we use this kind of vehicles, not only automated self-driving, but they are also connected. You have real-time information data. Then we can start to use the land much smarter. We create an area where people would like to live, be, work in, so this is a very important milestone. The idea is to make the public transport so attractive so the personal cars will be unnecessary and so expensive so the choice of not having a car will be very attractive. From a political view, especially when it comes to environmental issues and the climate issues, knowing that transportation will still increase so instead of having politicians make decisions saying we need less transportation, they should know that we can have smarter transportation. Because that is all about mobility, but in a function. But can we really get rid of the personal car? The driving force of having your own vehicle is very strong. Maybe you have uh, carpooling, you share with someone else, uh, or you, when you are in the cities, might use the public transportation or this kind of a mobility, as a, mobility services. But when you go for a distance, then it might be cheaper for you to just rent your car during that day or that week. Comparing buy a new car and almost never use it. So that's what I believe we will see in the future. Cars will be still needed, but you maybe don't have to own it. You might share it. But do the automation itself benefit the climate? When full automation is here, it will open up the possibility for a huge amount of more people to get individual transport when you don't need a driving license to go alone in a car. In the future we may even trust the system so much so our kids can go by themselves in them wherever they like. How many more vehicles on the streets will that generate? Automation and electrifying is a huge thing in the transport sector. The YouTube channel Now You Know with Zach and Jesse have regular updates about the future of transport with an environment-friendly perspective. Check them out, the link is in the description.